he stands up um, and he starts sharing that for the last couple of months, um, the world, lots of worldly things has been taking place in the church and he could not handle it anymore. And uh, he feels it's time for him to um, resign and step down and rather leave, but he's not going to take it anymore. And we thought to ourselves, what is he talking about? What is he referring to? Because in our minds, in our heads, we were... We, we were thinking that we are doing, you know, um, God's work. So I'm back home, back at my local church. I'm on fire for the Lord. I've been exposed to things in Canada. And I thought, why not bring about change at my local church? But for those of you that don't know, I grew up in a church that was very much staunch. It was an evangelical church. Uh, the ladies wore their hats. Uh, the men wore their suits and their ties. Uh, and um, <laughs> on the stage was your three beautiful high uh, back a uh, navy blue chairs, um, a massive pulpit and your two flower stands and your backdrop of a blue curtain uh, and in the corner was the the organ uh, and that was it the organ and then um, they used to call worship that time choruses time so uh, the scene was the service was nine o'clock but about 15 minutes before the time we would have someone on the guitar and with a tambourine playing some choruses but nine o'clock the service will start and they will start with hymn number 165 i'm just joking i don't even know what's hymn 165 but they would start off with a hymn they would open up in prayer and obviously you would have your program so there was nothing such as worship uh, at doc's mission factory then. and i think uh, also within the context of our, our other branches it was fairly new to them as well. So myself and a few of my buddies, um, Mornay and Fabian and a few of the other guys, um, we started learning, you know, some worship songs. And this all happened on a Saturday night. Now, Saturday nights was youth nights. And I want to give a shout out and acknowledge um, Pastor Trevor. At the time, he was my youth leader. We had an amazing time wow saturday nights was the place to be it was docs mission youth and we had so much fun uh, there was so much freedom but obviously when sunday morning came uh, that freedom was parked locked away until next week saturday evening so saturday evenings we used to hire uh, some sound and we would borrow a keyboard borrow some instruments and we started the worship my journey actually started on a saturday night um, at youth nights where we had worship, where we had, you know, the, these uh, so-called Pentecostal um, experiences, where as a Sunday morning it was prim and proper, you had your suit and tie, uh, you dare not make a noise or dare not um, shout Amen or Hallelujah, that, that, that was not allowed. So Saturday nights was the nights where we um, just had a ball of a time being in God's presence and at that time Hill Songs released an album called My Redeemer Lives. For those of you that know that orange um, CD cover, which was such a fun, upbeat, um, radical, you know, just proclamation that My Redeemer Lives. And we sung those songs on a Saturday night and uh, we took a huge chance. And one Sunday morning, I believe, um, I remember, uh, the Saturday night we prepared the stage, we uh, had the drums, now there was never drums in the church, so we put the drums on the stage, we had the keyboard on the stage and a bass guitar and um, we set the sound and we just, you know, set it up uh, the way um, a mega church would set up their stage. Uh, obviously we were very limited when it came to equipment, but we made, we made the best with what we had. 
And I remember that Sunday morning coming to church. We were all excited because we are going to introduce in this quarter session, this quarter's time before church starts, we are going to introduce some of the worship songs. Uh, and one of the worship songs was Mari Dima Lives. And I remember uh, that Sunday morning, we were all excited getting ready to come to church. And lo and behold, when we stepped into the church, we saw the three high back in navy blue chairs, the two beautiful flower stands and the pulpit and the organ was on the side. And we thought to ourselves, but where's our instruments? What happened? Who changed these things around? And we went to investigate and we were looking for our instruments and we went and looked and peeped behind um, the curtain and there were our instruments lying on the ground. It literally looked like someone just uh, thrashed the instruments um, behind the curtain and yo, we knew that this is going to be a battle uh, and as young people we thought we were doing something good we thought we were doing the Lord's work <laughs> and um, but it was seemed as a spirit of rebellion being raised you know raised up within the church um, but you know it went on Sunday after Sunday but Saturday nights we had our time and we were very strategic to, to, you know, introduce the songs and introduce, you know, new worship songs and introduce new instruments. It was tough. It was tough. However, we managed to, by the grace of God, we managed to get the instruments on the side of the church, the side of the stage. Um, and we started doing these songs and they were allowing us to have this quarter session. But the picture was this, so your typical Sunday at that time was we would have the youth doing these worship songs, doing these uh, new uh, songs, introducing the church in these new worship songs. And what happened was the scene was set like this. So we would be singing, quarter to nine, we would be singing these worship songs. And while we, we were singing these songs, in the parking lot, some of the elders, some of the senior men, and at that time, our senior pastor, um, at nine o'clock, they used to walk into the church and the leader of the church would step onto the stage and he would uh, say these words. I remember it so clearly. He would say, um, brothers and sisters, let's start the church service properly by singing hymn number 165. Um, and we looked at each other and we thought to ourselves, so what we'd done was, what, what was that? Um, but sooner we realized that they were not in favor of um, these things that we were introducing. The music was too loud. Um, the songs was, you know, um, was, was fairly new to them. And we must remember Hill songs was more of a soft rock uh, genre. And we were um, mostly singing songs that's slow and mellow and uh, the drums just you know destroyed you know the sound and people especially the seniors could not handle uh, you know the loudness of the music um, and so it went on Sunday after Sunday and you know we felt despondent we felt so discouraged and we thought ah man what uh, what's the use we we continue with doing this we just making things worse and I remember um, but before I get there before I get there, um, our, our youth nights were so impactful uh, in my days because um, it really laid a solid foundation in my youth and in my life and many other young people's lives that were a part of uh, that specific youth group at that uh, time um, under the leadership of, of Pastor Trevor Blaus. But I remember we were doing this PE trip, we went to Port Elizabeth, uh, it was our first so-called evangelism experience and that was the first time I ever preached and um, wow what a moment um, that was for me to, to preach uh, I, I don't know what I spoke about at that time I don't know um, you know what was my sermon title but that uh, experience was so powerful and there I realized that the call for ministry is quite evident in my life but at that time i still wanted to, i never had it in mind for me to become a full-time pastor 
I thought this would just be part of what God is going to use me. Uh, but I'm so thankful that for, for those experiences that I had in my youth uh, days, um, there's some uh, X-rated stuff that also took place. I, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> but I believe Pastor Trevor has uh, the evidence and the footage. And I hopefully uh, one day when I become famous, he won't blackmail me with that. <laughs> okay, we need to cut that up. We need to cut that up. So the senior pastor calls a church meeting. I remember we were sitting in the on the back row. At that time, we never had the padded uh, seats. We had the wooden benches, and we filled the last two rows, the last two benches of of the church. I don't know if it was uh, strategically so that we can escape or we can leave early, but uh, we we knew that we were in for something you know crazy that night. He stands up. Um, and he starts sharing that for the last couple of months, um, the world, lots of worldly things has been taking place in the church and he could not handle it anymore. And uh, he feels it's time for him to um, resign and step down and rather leave, but he's not going to take it anymore. And we thought to ourselves, what is he talking about? What is he referring to? Because in our minds, in our heads, we were we, we were thinking that we are doing, you know, um, God's work. We were, thinking, we were thinking we were adding value to the church. Uh, we were, you know, not doing anything wrong. You know, we were just doing worship. We were just introducing new songs. We, we were introducing new instruments. And we thought, um, you know, and at that time, in, even in our district, um, change was taking place. Um, a lot of other churches uh, were were um, doing worship and uh, introducing you know all these new things in the church and we thought that this is the way to go um, but lo and behold it was a nightmare for them and um, he decided no uh, it's time for him to pack up and when he was done talking one elder stood up and he said uh, no pastor you should not be leaving um, let's deal with these culprits you know they should be leaving not you and one after the other the elders stood up and and uh, the senior men stood up and and they supported the past and we looked at each other and we thought okay so you know what does this mean and we had two decisions that we could make was we could either stay and fight it out um, or we could just leave and you know let them go on with what they want to do and we could you know, just do whatever, either start our own church or I don't know what it was. But we thought this was so unfair. We were young, we were what, 18, 19, 20 um, year, year old youths that was, um, you know, just doing what they thought they were doing. Um, and, and we were sitting there and the Holy Spirit said, Theo, um, you stand up because you're the, you're the biggest culprit. <laughs> And he says, um, you stand up and you um, apologize. You ask for forgiveness. And I said, what the Holy Spirit? I said, what me? I said, what did I do wrong? And I remember, I remember standing up and I remember asking permission to speak and there was silence and I, um, I addressed the pastor and I said um, Pastor, I want to ask you for forgiveness I'm sorry for causing these, um, these things over the last couple of months and causing misery in your life and other people's lives we thought we were doing you know, something good and uh, I broke, I broke, I broke into tears and I remember my dad at the time was the associate assistant pastor and he came and he consoled me and shock, 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 what a time. And there was such a silence in the building and I remember one senior mother standing up to her feet and she said, these are our young people. We should be embracing them. 
we should be guiding them. We should not be destroying them and criticizing them. And when she said that, um, you know, the church, just the atmosphere, God's presence was so tangible in that place that uh, the very people, the very men that stood up, they came to me and they apologized. And wow, it was such an amazing time of restoration, of reconciliation. And um, our church, our church changed. There was suddenly just a shift in the atmosphere and people was asking for forgiveness and embracing our young people at the time. And at the time, across our, our um, district, a lot of churches, a lot of the young people were leaving their churches. There was lots of breakaways taking place. And here was a group of young people that decided just to humble themselves that just decided to be led by the Spirit and and wow, what a time, what a time that will continue to be with me, this memory for the rest of my life. And it has shaped me as a young person. Um, you know, sometimes in ministry, ministry gets hard, gets tough. Because you're dealing with people. And to humble yourself, I remember my mom always said, Theo, always be led by the Spirit and always keep yourself humble. God will defend you and God will uh, protect you. And what an awesome lesson as a young person starting off in ministry. Um, you know, it just shaped me, it just guided me and it just protected my heart. 